Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Debbie Alberico with Middletown City Schools, and welcome to our annual Business Partners Breakfast. It's great to see everyone here today, and even though we're missing a few people yet, um, we're, we're going to get started. Let's start with um, Reverend Tyus. Would you please come and do the invocation? Our Lord and our God, it's with thanksgiving that we come, thankful for the start of this brand new day, thankful for the partnership of which you allowed the Middletown City Schools and our business community to enjoy uh, over these weeks, days, months, and even years. And we pray that you might continue to strengthen that bond that our children, as we teach them, as they learn for this 21st century, that they will become that new workforce in many of these places of business. Now bless our coming together, bless the food that we will eat, that it will nourish us for the journey that you've assigned to our hands. For it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Tyus. I also need to introduce a few people uh, from the Board of Education. Marsha Andrew, who is the Board President. If you say hello. Um, John Sauter, Vice President. And of course, we all know Reverend Tyus. Um, now, Mr. Trick, would you like to speak, please? Thank you, Debbie. This is like the Presbyterian Church that I go to. Nobody sits in the front pews. <laughs> I've spent my time in the back pews, too, so I really appreciate all of you being here, seriously. Uh, I want to thank, thank you uh, for the partnerships, the way that you allow the business community, before I report on a couple of things, to be part of what you do. Firstly, first, on a, a personal note, you allowed uh, me to go around and track Jim Thomas over at Wildwood School one day, and I learned a ton of things of how good things are happening in the school system. I saw a lot of bright, young, eager students that just couldn't wait to, uh, well, maybe it was they wanted to see somebody new, but I don't think so. I think they were really anxious to learn. And I, I read into that not only the good, good job that all of our teachers are doing, but also I think is in many cases what a good job parents are doing to help them prepare to come to school and to learn. And I thank you for that opportunity personally, and I hope that you'll continue to do that. Uh, secondly, as many of you know, we have a relationship with Junior Achievement, and hello, Doug. Uh, JA has been in this community for a long time, and as you know, they bring in a curriculum in economic literacy that's approved at the national level and the state level and certainly accepted in the Middletown area. And we really appreciate the opportunity to help get volunteers from the private sector to be there with Doug and his staff and his curriculum. That gives us an input into the schools. Maybe it gives an opportunity for some students to say, what's it really like out there where we'll be someday? And that gives us an opportunity. That's not why we're there. We want to help the schools in any way we can, and we really appreciate that partnership opportunity. And the third thing that I like to mention, among many ways that I believe that business community helps work uh, to improve everything we, every way we can, is to volunteer our resources and time and energies and uh, contribute to the thought process for decisions that your Board of Education and your administration make to make this school the best it can possibly be. I serve on committees of finance, facilities, curriculum, and a number of other areas, and we really appreciate that opportunity. We know the decisions are made by the Board of Education, and we appreciate the opportunity to input to those things. Hopefully, uh, all of that will improve the communicate, continue to improve, I should say, the communications with uh, the populace. And we know that that's uh, an important thing to be able to say to anybody, any employers and employees that move to this community that we have an opportunity to be involved in that process. And that's why we feel this school system is the place to get the best education for anybody who wants to move here. Uh, speaking of moving here, we feel pretty good. I'd like to report that business community feels pretty confident about what's about to be happening, and it's going to get better, just like your school system, our school system, system is getting. Uh, a company called Metal Coders, which is a part of a big company in Texas called NCI. Don't ask me what those numbers stand for, or those letters stand for, but anyway, they're going to be moving into this area. There's no question that uh, the Sun Coke Project 
is already hiring. You've heard about that. And if any of you have not been down Yankee Road recently, uh, you ought to go there because that is a huge project that already is employing 700 people temporarily, but is going to be hiring, I think the number is now 80 to 100 permanent employees for steelmaking operations. And that represents the cleanest, most productive, most efficient operations in making steel you'll find anywhere in the world as far as the federal people are concerned. That's an exciting project. That's going to bring some jobs. And when those jobs come, they're going to be, kids are going to be coming with those, with those jobs. Uh, and they're going to be in our school system. We're very proud to be talking about being part of that. You already know what the hospital's doing. Uh, and the Green Tree Health Science Academy is not only an opportunity for continuing education and career development, but it's going to take jobs to be able to teach and instruct and help those people in the healthcare industry. There's no question that uh, Cincinnati State's involvement, let's all keep our fingers crossed, okay, and I'll put them in front of my front of me instead of putting it behind my back. Uh, while the Cincinnati State's not a done deal completely, as you know, we're pretty close. And that is an absolutely fabulous opportunity for the Middletown area to offer additional educational opportunities. They're going to be teachers. They're going to have to teach those people. We understand now that out of a campus that's overgrown uh, where they are in Cincinnati now, that there are about 1,500 students maybe, about close to 2,000 students in the Middletown area that are already driving to Cincinnati every day and going to school at Cincinnati State. When they move here, which is the first expansion uh, of their campus into this area outside of Cincinnati, that's a tremendous thing for Middletown. That's going to be jobs. Um, Pendleton Arts Center. For those creative students that are going to be reaching out to do something more than, than other things, that's going to be an opportunity for them to showcase their talents and their skills. And that's going to bring visitors to the community, particularly the downtown area. And that's going to bring customers for those kinds of things. So I know I'm leaving some people out, some organizations out, but we feel pretty good about that. Now, as uh, Reverend Tyus said, we, we really need to have this relationship with the school systems to help prepare, help you prepare your students for the future economy. We feel pretty good about that. And we feel pretty good about the job that you're doing. But it's really, uh, it's really very simple. When we have the jobs available, we want to have people who will finish their high school careers here, some of which will go off to college and we hope will come back. Uh, some of those will go into the armed forces and we expect that they will come back and they will come back to visit wherever they're taken, you know, on their careers. And one thing we'll do is we'll stand behind them and we'll very, very, feel very proud of what they're doing. Uh, we think there's an opportunity for everybody to excel in the school system. And when somebody comes into the school system, we don't want to have 60% or 70% of the people drop out of the school system. We want it to go all the way. When they come in from the ninth grade and they're marginally and they're on the edge and they get D's and they have an F though in there once in a while, we know by the time they'll be in the ninth grade, maybe they'll be making all D's and maybe a couple of C's. And that's MIDI magic in action. And when they get to, uh, they come in and they're C students and we get them to be, you get them to be B students, that's MIDI magic in action. And we know that you can do that. And the ones that are B's and they can get to A's, every one of these categories is an improvement, and that shows that MIDI magic is really in action. And we applaud you for that, and we thank you for that, and we thank you for the opportunity to be part of that. Hope you have a good morning this morning, and I'm looking forward to it. And I want to congratulate you on a, on a great year that you're doing and letting us be part of it. Thanks, Bill. I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's an organization called the National Association of Partners in Education Incorporated, or NAEP, N-A-P-E. And they did a study um, several years ago, in like early 2000-ish, that said one of the most important aspects of business community, uh, business school partnerships is community building. And I think Mr. Trick spoke very well of that. Uh, n next, we have Mr. Rasmussen, and this is his first business partners breakfast. Um, he's our superintendent. Come forward, please. Welcome to our business partner breakfast, um, and more importantly, thank you for, for all your work and your support for our school and our community throughout the course of this year. Um, some of you have probably heard me say before, but a strong school system 
needs a strong community. A strong community needs a strong school system. We are joined together, and neither can be strong without the other. We need each other. And, and I think things like this, efforts like yours to help and support our, our community and our school system go miles to helping us to be successful in our school system. Um, as, as I was thinking about a, a little bit about what I wanted to say this morning, I only have about 20, is it, was it 25 minutes or so, Debbie, that you said I had? No. Oh, okay. Um, I, I looked up in the word partnership in the good old Webster's Dictionary this morning. Well, really, I went online. You know, the, we don't use the dictionary so much anymore. And again, where we need to probably go in our school system is not reaching for the dictionary so much, but reaching for that computer that's sitting next to us and, and looking out. But when I looked up the, the word partnership, the definition was a relationship usually involving close cooperation between parties having specified and joint responsibilities. Let me read that again. A relationship usually involving close cooperation between parties having specified and joint responsibilities. There's a couple of key phrases in there that I think we, we need to think about as we think about partnerships. The first one was clo close cooperation. In order to cooperate, we have to understand each other. We have to understand each other's needs. We have to understand each other's challenges. We have to begin to take the time to understand each other. We can't assume that we understand or we know. Neither party, the business community nor the school, can just march off and assume we know what the other needs without asking. And, and so I think that, that close cooperation takes relationship building and takes communication and understanding. So think about that when we think about our business school partnership. The second key phrase in there is joint responsibilities. There are times when I think that um, we as a school system w appreciate what the businesses can do for us, but I often wonder if we're quite as willing to reach out and say, what can we do for you? And what can, what's the school system's responsibility in this partnership? We have a responsibility to prepare our students for you for your community. We have a responsibility to have an outstanding school system to support the community uh, that you're striving to, to build. But, but as part of that, is, and I want, I want to go on just a little bit with that, we have a, a, a curriculum committee, a board curriculum committee that is looking at exploring the 21st century skills. Where, where are we going with preparing our kids to be successful in the future? You know, the skills that they need are different now than they were 25 years ago. You all know that as business people and, part, and community people. We as a school system have a responsibility to find out what those skills are. What is it that you really desire from our students? This curriculum committee, which uh, Dr. Betsy Carter sitting up here is, is, is co-chairing with Tom Brickey. And I wondered if Tom was going to be here this morning. I know many of you know Tom Brickey as a community leader. But Tom and, and Dr. Carter share the, the responsibilities for this committee, but one of the things that they're exploring is 21st century skills. What does it take to be successful in the world today? And what do we as a school system have the responsibility to do to prepare kids to be successful? That, as, as part of this exploration, they want to reach out to you as business, business owners and community leaders and ask that question. In January, you're going you're to get a survey from the committee that's going to be asking some things like, what kinds of things are you looking for in hiring? What kinds of questions do you ask when you hire? What are some of the things that kids are lacking when they come to you? What are some of the, the tests that you may even give them to see whether they meet the prerequisites for your, your, your business or whatever that might be? They're going to use that to try to begin to mold what we would say are our 21st century skills for Middletown City Schools. What is it that we are going to do to prepare kids to meet your needs? That's our responsibility. And so again, as I think of partnerships, I think of close relationships and understanding, and I think of shared responsibility going both ways. And so I think it's up to us as a school system to learn more about what you need and to begin to move forward in that direction. So 
thinking about that, I hope you'll take a chance to a moment to respond to that survey when it comes out in January and give us the feedback we need to continue to nurture this partnership that we call the Middletown Community and the Middletown City Schools Partnership um, because we do need each other. We need each other. The ship is going to rise together or it's not. We need each other. So thank you for, your, for being here today. But again, more importantly, thank you for, for the opportunity that you serve our school district. Appreciate it. Thanks. Good morning. Um, I have the opportunity of introducing our um, GATE music teacher and some of our GATE students um, who are part of the music program with GATE. GATE is, are our gifted and talented students as defined by the state of Ohio. As we know, all of our Middletown students are special and gifted in some way, but the state defines gifted and talented um, through an assessment process and um, they qualify through a nationally standardized assessment and then by taking some individual assessments as well. And in Middletown, we choose to serve uh, gate or gifted students um, in math and science, in art, music, and in creativity. And so today, you all have the pleasure and the opportunity to hear uh, from our gate music students, and I would like to introduce them. And this is Leslie Hicks, um, who will delight you in some holiday entertainment, I'm sure. So here they are. Thank you. Much. In our class, we study a variety of music from different time periods, different genres. Uh, that piece is a Latin 13th century chant called Personae Hodie. And now we're going to switch over to about 1780 something for Mozart. Let's get away. 
is use a different, um, lots of different musical instruments. Um, and I'm giving them time to get what they need. The piece you just heard, the Mozart piece, Sing a Song of Merry Christmas, is in three-part canon, and it's three different tunes all linked together, and then some in three different parts going on at the same time. This piece is one that everyone will recognize, and it is in a lot of parts of harmony also, but the musical chords are moving along at the same time. And this has been a very interesting challenge for us because many of our students had never played handbells before, and we are also playing from memory. So, I know you will know this piece. <coughs>
Now you will hear a Spanish Christmas carol that I learned to sing in Spanish class in high school where our teacher um, often at the holiday times asked us to sing Christmas carols in class. And when we did that in Spanish, um, my friends sitting near me in class would go, sing louder, sing louder. <laughs> and this is the song that I remember the most from those days. And we also have um, some children in our class of Latino heritage, so we are also honoring them.
so this is different. Um, the next piece is called Caroling Caroling, and we'll be doing it in three-part harmony. This song was written by a man named Alfred Burt, and this was Alfred's way each year of sending Christmas cards. He would write a song, and to all his friends that he sent Christmas cards to, the card was the song. So his intent was that when people got the card, either Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, at some point over the holidays, they would all gather around the piano or some instrument and sing the song. And that was his wish for them for their holiday season. So this is Alfred's Christmas card one year that he sent to all his friends. And we are attempting the original version in three-part harmony. actually already heard. It is the Mozart piece called Sing a Song of Merry Christmas and somewhere along the line I got the idea that if they could sing it in three-part canon in harmony with each other then I wondered if they could play it. And that's what you're about to hear now. Thank you. 
we'd like to leave you with one last thought before we depart today. And this piece is called Music Alone Shall Live. As I said earlier on, Middletown has an amazing, gifted and talented enrichment program. I can't think of one that is as extensive as what we have in the area or even north of us, so across the state really. So I, I commend the GATE staff. Our teachers are very professional and they really know what they're doing, obviously. So thank you very much for coming today. We really appreciate it and you did a great job. Feel free to grab a bite. May I Thank you for coming today. I very much appreciate it. It was great to see everyone. Um, have a happy holiday. Thank you. <laughs>